My name is Isaiah Newkirk and I am a coach here with FastCat Coaching. Welcome to the first video of our training video series. These videos are to showcase high level coaching strategies and how you can use these to benefit your own training. So with the 2021 season pretty much here, it's a time of year where athletes come to us with the big question of what training approach is right for me. While there are plenty of great training plans to guide you out there, including the ones we offer, it's hard to know exactly which one to choose and how to piece them together to correctly to set up your season. What I'm going to go through will help you make sure that you have the right training approach for you by using your past data. This is also a great tool for coaches and self-coached athletes alike, and this is something I use with pretty much every single one of my athletes. But before we get started, I want to make one point. A good coach will always be learning about how particular training stresses can either not work or work for individual athletes. And I like to think of my athletes as puzzles. And the goal is to help find the best training approach for both their goals and their athlete makeup or their strengths and weaknesses. So you might try one approach and then need to pivot to try another. So don't be afraid to keep a watchful eye on your data and be open to new training stressors and or switching gears. There is not always one answer to a problem, but data gives us a pretty high level place to start. Um, so WKO is a very good platform to find these data points, but as most athletes use training peaks, I'm going to stick to that platform in these examples. So to find the right approach, we'll go through three key steps. Learning your schedule and training volume, learning who you are as an athlete through peak metrics in two charts, and learning the demands of your goals. From these three steps, the plan comes into play by filling the holes and allowing you to know what training will be effective and to the point. There is one key thing to do before diving in though. When an athlete comes to me, I spend a few hours just sorting through their data and cleaning it up. What I mean by that is removing power spikes and or bad files. So for example, recently an athlete of mine had their power meter go crazy and they set a new FTP, FTP of 800 watts. So this was obviously will skew your data and in a non-accurate way. So you should remove these bad files and clean them up. Next, let's start figuring out who you are as an athlete and get into the three steps. First, volume. Um, so look back over the last year and see what your average duration was. This gives us an insight into how much time you were able to devote to training. A simple spot to pull this from is in Training Peaks in the dashboard, duration by week chart. So I had it to bike and the last period of time you spent building for an event. This will show you an average duration. Um, next, now from there, ask yourself if you have more time to give in your current schedule. Be honest with yourself because, you know, a one hour ride is very, commonly not a one hour ride, it is awfully more likely a two hour ride all said and done. But from this, you can pull what your average training time can be and should be in order to make yourself have gains on the previous year and the previous year of training. The importance of knowing average training time is not because volume is the key and is everything. It's actually because um, we want to make the best use of the time that you have. For example, if you're an athlete that is training for a 100 mile gravel race that will take you eight hours to complete and you only have eight hours a week to train, then you need to make the most of your training and get creative in order to really boost out your you know, replication rides and really make it as pointed as possible. Um, it's not impossible for you to train for these really long events with a short period of time, but you just have to make the most of your training and use it correctly. Um, so now we know what your volume is and what you have to work with. So let's find out what areas you need to focus on. In order to do this, we need to get to know where you are as an athlete. So what your strengths and weaknesses are, and then compare that to what your goals are. So first you want to lay out your goals. So write down your A goals and or races. Once you have those listed out, find out what the demands are of those events. If you have done the event in the past, then go back through your file and pull out the key moments from the race. Look for the biggest demands and the biggest sections of raw power. So if your main event is the Leadville mountain bike race, the key demands to pull out are the key climbs, the fact that it's over a very long duration and the fact that it's at altitude. But if it's a criterium, it could be instead that you need to hit 900 watts, you know, 30 times in an hour. Um, if you have not done the event, then this just takes doing some digging. With technology nowadays, you can find past athletes' activities on Strava 
and review what rough power they had to do and look for, you know, photos and ask athletes who have done the event what the conditions are, basically reconning the race um, virtually. All of these will give you what the demands are and what you need to prep yourself for. Finding those keys, those, that pieces of information are keys to success at races. Um, and pros do this, you know, everyone does this. So it, it's really important to get on terms with that. Um, so the next step is to learning who you are as an athlete through peak metrics in two charts. We learn this by piecing together what is known as your power curve. The first graph is the power profile chart. Um, there's a lot here and, you know, naturally our eye kind of trends to the left, um, that goes to the ranking chart and try and ignore that. There are better uses of, of this chart. Um, what this chart does for us is it gives us a basic data points to look at with watts per kilogram included. So if you're an athlete that doesn't produce high power, but let's say for example, your five minute watts per kilogram is pretty good, then this graph will pinpoint that and tell us that, you know, this is something that we can use to your advantage and label it as a strength. Um, so then the second chart to use is the peak power chart. Um, this chart I use as a glimpse into an athlete at their best. So strictly from a data point of view. Um, but by looking at this, we can see what your peaks are on a really large scale. So one second all the way, you know, up to three hours and beyond if you want. Um, so you can also compare this chart to custom time selections from year to year. So that's also useful. Um, but after you have all of this in front of you, um, you have the time to train that you have to train, the demands of your event and goals, and then the power profile viewed from several lenses through two charts. Now you are looking for holes in your training by comparing everything and from that you can create a plan forward. So this is when you know, the puzzle part of an athlete comes into play. Your volume gives you how much time you have to work with, who you are as an athlete and your peak metrics tell you um, your strengths and weaknesses um, and the demands of your goals tell you if you need to continue to work on those strengths and, work, and or work on the weaknesses. Um, this sounds simple, but really, you know, dig deep into those three steps and I bet some small things will kind of jump out at you that you really need to work on. So while I can't, you know, tell you exactly what to work on specifically for you, here are a few examples of my athletes that I went through this process with. We will call them athlete one, two, and three. So athlete one was focusing on time trials, but was missing sustained power that matched the power that they were looking to compete with. So they have been doing regular 10 to 20 minute climbs in training, but with the state TT as their primary goal, it was, you know, they were missing that long range effort because, you know, in this case, and in most cases, the state TT is on the 40 K marker. Um, so they were missing that. So we wanted to slowly work on control in the TT position. And then we pushed out that duration, um, to achieve that outcome. So then athlete two started working with me more recently, and he's training for a 1400 kilometer event. Now, this is a great example of where his sustained training volume and long range power uh, gave me really huge insight into the plan of action that we needed to take. He was actually, you know, missing three to five hour rides. And instead up to that point, he had either been doing a 14 hour ride or a one to two hour ride. Uh, for him, it's important to focus on, you know, the consistency side and in the middle range and be able to make the most of it by staying on the pedals so that his training time transfers really well to those long ultra events. Now, athlete three was a professional road racer. She was a threshold monster and crushed TTs. But the problem is that at racing professionally on the road, she needed to boost her top end to make the brakes and win races at the top level. Both her peak power chart and power profile chart very clearly showed that she had just spent most of her time working on her strengths and what she enjoyed doing, um, which was the you know st steady, sustained motor effort. Um, but she was missing the required pop she needed to win. So this took a pretty drastic training change on our part, but it paid off big time after a couple months of changing that focus. All right, so a lot there, but let's recap. Find your volume to start, to know how much time you have to work with, figure out who you are as an athlete through your peak metrics, to know your strengths and weaknesses, and then find the demands of your goals to know if you need to continue to boost out your strengths or work on your weaknesses.
After you know what holes you need to fill or what demands you need to focus on, then you can put together the right training approach for you. All right, thanks everyone for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments below and I hope this helps you achieve your goals this year. Um, see you next time.